So number one, a, a weird one. Uh, Roman Pol Roman Polanski's films top the French box office. This is just a kind of, you know, one of those kind of anomalies in council culture that doesn't seem to um, that doesn't seem to make sense, but also maybe does. Council culture is only really for. I think council culture only works for people that people only only um yeah council culture only happens or is only successful when people already have reservation about the person that's been accused they don't like the person they don't think they're deserving of the opportunity blah 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 i think usually when somebody's quite well regarded or well liked or whatever it may be or hasn't really had any drama associated with their name usually cancer culture can get swept under the rug you can make an apology disappear from media for a couple of months come back and everyone's forgotten about it but i think when people don't like you they use cancel culture as a way to essentially cancel you right um they want to ruin your life they want to um teach you a lesson um and kind of be the moral police in that regard um but with the Roman Polanski thing is odd because again it involves minors, um, it involves lewd sexual acts. So you would assume there will be some crimes that, that regardless of who you are, there's just no coming back from, right? You would assume like you know touching up kids, um, in any kind of way, um, murder in any kind of way would rec would no matter how kind-hearted you were no matter how much of a good person you were that was completely just kind of ice you from the conversation ice you from the industry you'd think so right and i'm 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 a i'm very for redemption right I'm, I'm i think people should be forgiven or should be or should have a path to redemption i don't think anyone should be cast aside forever and ever i think there is an intrinsic good in all of us um as long as people are being are able to give it a platform an opportunity to grow and learn from the experience if of course the person shows you that they are unwilling to change or refuse to change then you can completely ice them and tell them to get the f out of here right but people should give them the opportunity but the roman plan skipping is strange because it seems as if he was accused of what he was accused of um he ran away came back people opening with open, open arms have completely ignored what happened he ran away again and now he's made a film and it's topping the charts in France, right? And it's completely odd. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, and, you know, if you know anything about French politics or French um, uh, activist movement, you would know that the feminist movement in France is strong. They don't mess around there, right? And they're very prone to protesting at any slight inconvenience in their life. So to have somebody like Roman Polanski thriving, succeeding in France, just is a weird anomaly that I haven't quite figured out why it's happening. But also I think it might be that he's just incredibly lucky that it happened when it happened, you know, in the 70s, 60s, whatever it was. And that nowadays, for the most part, the people that were for, that were most against him have kind of given up and moved on. And the kids nowadays don't know, don't really know their history, right? That kid that went on Good Morning Britain and said that, the, you know, school should stop teaching kids about World War II. Kids are unaware of their history, um, maybe don't want to read into their history because they don't want to be traumatized or triggered. So Roman Polanski is able to kind of frolic around and kind of get away with what he got away with. But this is a really interesting article from Al Jazeera. It says Roman Polanski's film tops the French box office despite his rape claim, right? Um, it says the following. Um, Roman Polanski's new film is topping the French box office despite rape allegations against a controversial director, an office and a spy, an officer and a spy, sorry, surged ahead of the Matt Damon racing car pick Ford and Ferrari, which is also getting a bad rap because they're saying it's a typical dad bro movie. Like you, we can't have anything, right? If a movie's too, that's why I'm. That's why I'm interested. Why John Wick didn't get any hate? Maybe because people like John Wick, right? Do people like Matt Damon and Christian Bale? Probably not, right? Or possibly not Matt Damon because he said that thing about um, there needs to be a difference between touching asses and sexually assaulting somebody, right? That's the thing. Someone, do right? He said there needs to be a um, a level of a level of severity depending the the the, the punishment should fit the crime. Not all crimes are the same. I think something like that, right? I think so. But that's getting some weird backlash. I don't really understand why that's happening. But again, you know, what can we do? Uh, Epic Ford and Ferrari, which is the top of the US box office, despite the publicity campaign for the movie being suspended in the wake of the latest claims of the veteran filmmaker. French photographer Valentin Monnier threw the release into the historical thriller about the Dreyfus affair into disarray by accusing Polanski of raping her in 1975 when she was 18 after beating her into submission at the Swiss chalet. That is an insane story, right? The... I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, miffed about why the woman would release that story just when the film was kind of going into the press run. Maybe it was part of her lawyer's uh, strategy in order to kind of force Polanski to settle or something. I don't know. It just seems a bit fishy. But if that is true, 
imagine being able to survive that allegation just forget forget you believe her or not just imagine the allegation flowing above your head and and a production company still investing money into you to make a film maybe it's the pure fact of maybe this goes to show why colin kaepernick is going through what he's going through now maybe he's just not at the talent level where people can accept all the drama as noble as a fight as he's fighting i think most sports organizations just do not want to get involved in politics at all they just don't give a fuck right they just don't want to get involved um they just want they're all about the sports they're all about the money they're all about the trophies all about success that's it they don't care about anything else outside of it which is why you're seeing you know i think the copa del rey is going to be played in saudi arabia right they're selling their soul there um you know most um uk club fans are like what are kind of you know used to most uk club most fans of uk football teams are very quick to kind of you know take the piss out of man city for their foreign owners or their saudi owners but if those same Saudi owners decided to kind of invest money into Bolton, Aston Villa, Everton, not Everton, um, Sunderland, right, and put some money into them and get and allow them to compete at the highest level, those fans wouldn't care. So, and Antonio Brown's the same way, right? The receiver that's been kind of ousted from the from the NFL. People are still saying he may have opportunity to come back to the league. Maybe the Colin Kaepernick stuff is because he's just not an elite level performer. He's not. The, the, at the top of the apex right if he was an elite performer people wouldn't care if he was kneeling or if he was crawling into the stadium but the fact that he's just all right and the fact that he's making a more hassle than what it's worth with his whole with his activism that he's doing at the moment people are probably like you know what we can we're all right with that we'd, we'd rather not have the headache so maybe roman polanski is the same sort of issue because he's just so he's such a talented film filmmaker people are willing to take the societal instagram social media twitter backlash because they know for the wide for the ma- wide majority of people out there, they just want to go see a good film. They're not going to care about all the protests, which is a very risky move to make. Because, you know, those those if there's one thing we know about act- social media social or social justice warriors, they're very good at activating people online, so they can get in touch with production houses. Um, they could um do like the what's that the sw- swatting of of theaters and stuff, where they claim someone have a, has a gun there, they get a SWAT team to come down and close the place. They could you know loads of stuff they could do. So it's a very risky move for them, but I guess they're confident that it's not going to go anywhere else, isn't it, right? So um, it continues here. But despite uh, protests outside the cinema, a, a call by the feminists of boycott the movie starring Oscar-winning actor uh, Jean Dujardin, nearly 400 people had flocked to see it by late Monday. Polanski, 86, denies the, uh, attacking Monier, a former model. He's 86 years old. She's still move, making movies. That's mad, isn't it? A former model actress and threatened to sue her accusers, which he hasn't done still. I think that's also a big sign that he might be guilty. If you're going to sue someone, you're just going to sue them. Because especially if you're getting defamed in this way and you, and you think you're innocent and this girl's making it up, you're just going to sue them. Especially if you're Roman Polanski, you've got the means to do it. I think most people don't end up suing because they don't have the means and it's a long projected process. Or maybe Roman Polanski is, or maybe he knows that she's probably propped up by some very powerful lawyers. So if he starts to get into that war, it's just going to be over for him. And then all these other charges will come out of the woodwork. So he's probably wise not to do it if you want to get away with something, but that's very fishy. Um, the unexpectedly strong turnout for the film is the seventh best opening weekend by a French film in 2019, according to figures by the CBO box office. Its success angered critics of the French Polish maker of Rosemary Baby and Chinatown, who has been a fugitive from the US justice system since admitting the statutory rape of a 13 year old girl in 1977 in a plea bargain to avoid a trial on more serious charges. Melissa Silverstein, the US founder of women in Hollywood, was scathing. What the F, France? In the column of how much more work needs to be done on women in film and the industry, Ron Blansky's movie led the box office in, in France. Silverstein had uh, lacerated the organizers of the Venice Film Festival earlier this year for sex in the film, which went on to win the Silver Lion and the Critics' Prize despite the head of, of the jury. I just seen the filmmaker Lucrezia Mato admitting she was uncomfortable about Polanski. Uncomfortable, but not uncomfortable enough to step down and not pick the movie, innit? Privilege! Everyone wants their privilege. Everyone wants their privilege. No one wants to give it up. Everyone talks a big game, but in the end, no one wants to give it up. But yeah, I don't really have much to say about this issue. Just interesting to see that counterculture only affects certain people only affects certain people from a certain time and era and only affects certain industries it's a very selective process it's not a blanket thing so when sometimes people get a bit over you know hot above the council culture i think when you look at it properly the people that get cancelled are the ones that people don't like and maybe karmically have something coming to them anyway there's the people that um are able to withstand the council culture the ones that have the means to and kind of ride it out 
And the ones that get caught up in it by mistake usually can also ride it out if they decide to pivot into other areas. But it's obviously, it's obviously a distressing issue. It's not something that I would wish on anyone. You know, I can't imagine being a nobody and all of a sudden having your mentions go up to 99 plus on your fucking, on your every social media platform you have and being worried about opening your doors and answering the phone call and, you know, people spamming your employer and getting in touch with your sponsors and all this sort of stuff. I can't imagine how horrible that may be, but, you know, wow. Roman Polanski is still surviving and thriving. I'm not sure how, but he is. So that's one bit of news.